Welcome to another episode of Let There Be Talk. It is episode number 707. 707, my friends. And if you're old like me, you might remember that band 707, which I didn't even uh, remember until I looked up what episode I was on. And then I was like, oh, yeah, fucking 707. They had that song Mega Force. I think it was 1983, kind of uh, in the um, vein of like Night Ranger. They were on the same label as Night Ranger. And the whole time I thought they were from uh, Sonoma County. That's the area code up there in the Bay Area, 707. I'm from the 707, dog. But uh, they weren't, which is hilarious. They had uh, Kevin Chalfont. Uh, that's his name, the singer. He later on, I think he sang in The Storm kind of that journey spinoff with uh, Greg Raleigh. And uh, what was that guitar player's name? Fuck, I forgot his name. I know it, but he uh, he looked like Neil Sean and he was uh, Neil's buddy. Josh Ramos played in uh, Le Mans. Fucking brain is working on a Sunday. I'm uh, recording this on Sunday here in Las Vegas because I'm about to do two more shows. And then uh, drive home in the fucking Prius with Gertrude. It's been 114, 115, 16, 18 out here. And I finally realized I could probably never live in Palm Springs or Arizona or even Joshua Tree as much as I want to live out there. Hence the hat, the tree hat wearing today. But uh, fuck, man. The heat is just gnarly. They, you know, people get old and they want to live around the heat. I, I don't know, man. I'll take some uh, Boise or Portland or Boulder. You know, I mean, fuck. You know, like Gertie can't go outside. We've been here in Vegas. I got to take her out at night. It's over 100 at night. Knock it off, son. Knock it off. We get it. You're fucking hot. Chill out. <laughs> But I take Gertie out at night. I got to keep her off the ground, carry her over to the uh, spot where the dogs shit out here at the Rio. They got the shit spot for the dogs. And it just smells. It, it's so hot that it just bakes this urine poop dog station. It just bakes it. As soon as you walk up, it's like, ooh, it smells like a porta potty at Coachella on a, after a three day festival. God damn, hot as fuck out here. But great shows, man. Really good shows at the Comedy Cellar this week. 14 shows, and they've all been really, really good. Working on some new stuff. I enjoy the uh, the comedy aspect of Vegas. And I've said it many times before, I, I, I couldn't live here. If you live here, I, I, all right, you know, I'm not going to knock it. People live places, but I couldn't do it. I could not do it around this uh, weird energy. I took some mushrooms yesterday, walked around the casinos. I took them around 10 a.m., little solo mushroom trip, and uh, walked around the casinos. That is a weird energy when you're on mushrooms in a casino. I went over to the, uh, where did I go first? First of all, I, I rode the little shuttle over to the Aria and I spun over there just to go walk around. And uh, they got some crazy architecture in that uh, the crystal shopping area. And I was just sitting in there on mushrooms looking at this weird wood structure. I was like, oh, right on. Uh. And then I got on the little uh, it's weird when you're on mushrooms during the day. And you're around all the normal people and they're not. You're just walking around like, all right. And then I rode the shuttle over to the Bellagio. And I was like, oh, I got to get the fuck out of here. There was just too many people. It was fierce. I like went to the Omega watch shop. And I was in there looking at watches, just cooking on mushrooms, just ah, <laughs> playing it off. I, I think, you know, you think you're, you think you got it all cool. Um, but the energy is weird when you're on mushrooms in Vegas, you can really feel the weird energy 
of the people gambling. And I've said it many times. I never understood gambling at all. It's so dark, man. It is so dark because people like there's gambling for fun. I get it. You're a little drunk. You hit the craps table. You're rolling. It's a Friday night. People are yelling and screaming. You feel like you're performing. I'm up. Who? Yes, snake eyes. Fuck. But you get, you know, you get around that casino late night, like four in the morning until like 10 the next day. And you see the people still trying to get their rent back. They're like, fuck. I got, I just spent my rent. I've got to, I've got to win it back. And then they're, you know, hitting their buddies up dude. Just, just let me 20, man. I, I'm feeling lucky now. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, man. Fucking weird energy, man, on mushrooms. You can really take it in. I was like, I got to get back to my room, hang out with Gertie. Just look out the window at the fucking Allegiant Stadium where the Raiders play. I looked at that thing for about an hour, the black flying saucer. Wow. Anyway, it's uh, it's been a good week of shows, man. I've been feeling good. And if you came out, thank you so much. Uh, a lot of different people came out that listened to the podcast, and I always really appreciate that. It's very, very cool. Let's see. I wanted to talk about a few different things today. It is a solo episode, and I was just talking about uh, Greg Raleigh and uh, Journey and 707 and all that Bay Area stuff. But what was funny is lately I've been following this uh, Instagram uh, midnight special. That was a, a 70s TV show when I was growing up. You'd catch on Friday nights. It was after Johnny Carson. Back then, you know, Johnny Carson was a, a lot of people don't remember this, was an hour and a half. You know, imagine like you watching Jimmy Fallon right now for an hour and a half, but it was an hour and a half for a long time. And if you wanted to watch a band, you'd have to stay up till around five minutes to one. And back then, man, I was, you know, in school, just trying to stay up one eye in it. Like, oh, God, fucking, I got to see the Doobie Brothers. And you just would fall asleep. No VCR. None of that shit. No YouTube to watch it the next day. Now, you know, comedians on. I don't even need to watch the show. If it's a friend of mine, I'll just watch their set the next day or a band. It'll be the next day on the YouTube channel. Jimmy Fallon's YouTube channel. There it is right there. White Reaper playing killer. But uh, back then, man, you had to fucking stay up. So it was uh, interesting to read the history of the Midnight Special because I, I watched it so much. They had the Midnight Special. And they had Don Kirshner's rock concert. And these were two different shows that were just giving a massive, massive platform to rock music and soul and R&B and comedians, man. The Midnight Special would have comedians on. Sometimes they would host it, you know, Richard Pryor, George Carlin, Cheech and Chong. And it was just an incredible incredible show uh the bands did not lip sync which they did on soul train and um and american bandstand which is another place you would get to see bands but that was kind of it was fun to see your favorite band but they were just lip syncing it was just awful they actually had those microphones with the bad antenna on the end to make it look like it was some wireless mic just homemade, just crazy. But I was reading about how the midnight special happened. And uh, this guy, this guy, I sound like uh, Norm Macdonald there. This guy had an idea. He thought he had put on a show. This guy, huh? <laughs> Fuck, I miss Norm. God damn. I miss seeing him at the comedy store. I miss his comedy. What an original, man. What an original. Anyway, this guy came up with an idea. Back then, TV would shut off. Network TV at 1 a.m. 
You, you remember that? I remember my mom would just fucking fall asleep to TV. I'd come home from like band rehearsal and it would just do that. This is a public service announcement. NBC is shutting off. <laughs> Nothing would be on again till 6 a.m. Just fucking blank channels. Oh, the simplicity. The simplicity of when I was growing up, you dum-dums. You didn't have 4 million channels and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and fucking all that other shit. Anyway. So this guy, I had his name. I wanted to look at it. I want to give the guy proper glory because anybody that comes up with something that fucking cool, here we go. Unbelievable. His name is Bert Sugarman. Bert Sugarman is the creator of the Midnight Special. Bert Sugarman. Holy shit. Looks like he's still alive. He's 84. But somebody has put together a uh, incredible YouTube channel with all of the performances, and it is stunning. But he had an idea, and he went to NBC, and he said, hey, you know, there's nothing on after Johnny Carson. Why don't we put this music show on, call it Midnight Special, Friday night. People are up doing a little toot, drinking some Coors, and, uh, you know, smoking a little reefer. Let's give him something to watch. And NBC's like, nah, see you later, dude. And he said, okay, well, I'll just buy an hour and a half of time and I'll put up a TV show. And he put up the pilot and it fucking smoked it. And NBC was like, oh, whoa. And they ended up buying the idea from him and, and letting him create the show. And at first he was begging bands to be on it. And then the show got so hot that bands were begging him to be on it. And I'm telling you, man, it is some of the greatest live performances captured by some of the biggest bands up and coming and famous that you'll ever see. It's just insane to watch. Journey, uh, talking about Greg Raleigh, there's this incredible clip of, uh, hold on, let me look at this stuff here. It's just so insane. And they're, oh, they got an uh, Instagram channel, by the way, too. Instagram channel. Uh and they got an Instagram channel. But uh go to the YouTube. Let me see here. Midnight special. And uh enjoy these performances. They're just they're just stunning, man. I was just telling Ian about it because uh he, he saw a clip. Okay, check this out. They got a clip on here. Um, that is so insane. It's Journey and Herbie Hancock playing. And it is fucking nuts. It is insane, man. They got so much good stuff. Steely Dan, Ted Nugent. Uh, let's see here. Willie Nelson, Jim Croce, Adonna Summer. It goes on and on. I mean, everything. Kiss. Kiss at the fucking early, just crushing it. Kiss early on with the smoke and everything. And they'd shoot them. The band would play live. And uh, it'd blow your mind. I'll, I'll give you a little list of some of the people that played this thing. It was just so unreal, man. I was looking at the list. They had everybody. The ACDC footage is so mind-boggling. With Bon Scott, it'll just blow your mind. They had ABBA, ACDC, Aerosmith, Alice Cooper. You know, I'm not going to name them all because it's hundreds of bands. The Cars, the Cars clips really blew my way to blow my mind to see the Cars at that time, just early, you know, mid '70s. ELO, Earth, Wind, and Fire, just crushing it. Al Green, Heart, oh Heart lights it up on this thing, man. So all these clips are on um youtube now richard pryor unbelievable ario speedwagon you know ario speedwagon right up until that high infidelity record they were just fantastic and then you know they had the big hits 
I want to keep on loving you. <laughs> that, that's the curse, man. You get the monster hit from the ballad and either the singer is like, let's do more ballads or the record company is like, let's do more ballads. And then all of a sudden they lose their full heaviness. And Ario Speedwagon is definitely one of the uh, kings of that. Before that, just Gary Richrath. What an unbelievable guitar player, this guy. And sad, sad story. If you watch their behind the music, oh my God. It's just so sad. There's like a scene with him at like a, 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 a park and he's like on like the monkey bars or the merry-go-round thing or whatever. And the party's just like, it just, it just went downhill, man. Whoa, man, he is just trashed. And then Kevin Cronenberg was the lead singer. I think Ario Speedwagon's still out there doing it, but nowhere near what they were. They were fucking, I mean, riding the storm out. These guys were great. I saw them at Dan the Green. They fucking, they headlined a day on the green, man. 60,000 on that big high infidelity record. What a record that is. Great record. Anyway, Midnight Special, Don Kirshner's rock concert. Then later on, of course, SNL having all the great live performances of like Fear and Devo and the Rolling Stones, man. The Stones kill it on SNL. And then that show Fridays. Another great show that was like a SNL copy. That's where that uh, that dude uh, from Seinfeld, what's his name? Oh, the guy that just got bounced, uh, Richard. What is his name? He was on. He was on uh, Fridays, and he was funny as fuck on that. The guy that got completely canceled for going cuckoo at the Laugh Factory. But these are the spots you could see great live music and you know these days you just it's tough to see more of a, like a, a big platform like midnight special where a band would come on and play three four songs unbelievable to have all that in the can and then to be able to have the beauty of uh, youtube to put it all up which by the way subscribe to my youtube channel dean del Rey. please subscribe and uh Send it around to your friends and let them know that uh, the channel's out there. And also, speaking of that, I have uh, fired back up the Grail. It was down for six months. I was having some tough times keeping myself together. And uh, I've kind of, uh, you know, working on it, staying positive, and I fired back up the Grail. I feel good about it. I feel good about uh some of this new material. So yeah, last week was shady, weird, grim, but that's just uh, real. You got to be real. Can't go on the podcast every time and be like, it's fucking great, dude. Some guy left a comment last week's episode. Man, this episode gave me a headache. <laughs> and it's not all fucking perfect. If it was, I'd have fucking... 40 million listeners. <laughs> mm. Anyway, Midnight Special, really fucking cool. I'm going to uh I'm gonna be back in Vegas during the F1 Formula One race with Burr in November. We're doing the MGM Arena and we're gonna get to see that Formula One race, which is gonna be fucking crazy. Racing cars. It, they say it's going to be the biggest event in the history of Las Vegas, which would be wild because uh, the cars are going to be racing down the strip and through in, in and out of the casino areas and shit. So I can't wait to see what this is going to be like, man. Formula One. I saw Formula One with Bill in Austin, Texas, about five years ago. And that was crazy on a track, but this will be like kind of the, the one they do, um, what is it like in France or somewhere where they do it down the water. Just that's the shit that was crazy. Kind of like that Long Beach Grand Prix where it goes around Long Beach. Fucking wild. 
So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I will be back in Vegas in November with the mighty Bill Burr, and we will be watching that race. And uh, speaking of racing, I didn't get to go drive the cars because it was just too hot out here. It was too hot to uh, ride, drive any of the Ferraris or anything out at Dream Race. It's the first time in years that I haven't drove a car on the track while I'm out here. I didn't do anything. I wanted to go see Oppenheimer. I think that's how you say it. And it was totally sold out at the IMAX. So I'm going to see it on um, Sunday or no, Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. at the Chinese Theater, Grauman's Chinese Theater, which is one of the greatest movie theaters of all time. And I haven't been in it for years. And I am looking forward to going and seeing this epic film in true 70 millimeter IMAX. I was reading a lot on it. And you have to really find out if your theater has the true IMAX. Because there's IMAX and then there's bogus IMAX, I guess. I don't know. But I know one thing. I want to see it the way the director wants you to see it. And that's in this true giant IMAX. I think the fucking film is like, it's like 600 pounds, the canister and 11 miles of film or something or vice versa. I don't know, but I'm going to see it on Wednesday morning. I'm fired up. I need to catch up on the movies, man. I got to see Indiana. I got to see Mission. I got to see Barbie. I'll just go see Barbie because it's fucking weird. They made Barbie. Let's see it. I'll probably see that on an airplane. And then I got to see Oppenheimer. And I'm seeing that first. So that'll be uh, Wednesday, 10 a.m. I'll talk about it on the Patreon bonus episode. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, looking forward to going back to the Chinese theater. If you've never been there, it is a masterpiece of a movie theater. It is old Hollywood with the handprints out front, all of the major old school uh, premieres done there over the years and years and years. And it's just true Hollywood history. You go in there, it's just giant. They redid it a few years ago. It's beautiful. And, and I've seen so many great premieres in there. A bunch of Tarantino premieres. Uh, I think Django Unchained I saw in there, premiere, and the other one, the Germans one with Brad Pitt. Uh, I can't remember the name of that right now, but uh, it is, uh, I know it's Tarantino's favorite place to premiere a film. And I know Christopher Nolan, uh, apparently he has a secret favorite seat in there. He likes to run his film and sit in this seat and make sure everything is right. So if you're in LA, I guess the Universal Studios and the Chinese Theater are the only ones where you can truly see it in true IMAX. But the IMAX right up the street here at the Palms was totally sold out. Me and another comedian were going to go see it. And um, fucking every screening sold out. And some theaters with IMAX, it's sold out for the run. So that's pretty cool to think about people are are going back in the movie theaters because, you know, like I said before, with the strike and everything going down after COVID, the movie industry's had a tough, tough time. So I don't know. Are you guys going to see it? I, I, it's, I think it's a must see, you know? Mm. Sipping off my fucking spin drift. I'm on spin drift recently, lately, after reading that Topo Chico has some kind of fucking high levels of some bullshit in it. It's always something, man. It is always something. All right. Get into some more here. What else do we got? Did you guys have a good weekend? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. <coughs> man. My throat is trashed from just huffing AC. Just huffing the AC, man. Unreal. Ah, okay. This is what I was going to talk about a couple days ago 
was the 37th year anniversary of Appetite for Destruction. Wow. Which means when I turn 60, it'll be 40 years old, that record. So I guess I was 20. I don't, I don't know how that is. I thought maybe, you know, 1987, July 21st, it came out. But, uh, you know, every year on that anniversary, I always think back to that record and where I was when I got it and who I was with, what I was doing. And it's such an iconic debut. Many, many, many times people will battle it over out. What is the greatest debut record of all time? Is it Van Halen one? Is it the first Doors record? Is it Appetite for Destruction? Is it the first Boston record? There's people are at Boston. Yeah, that thing had a fucking massive impact. And uh, then you start thinking about records that had a huge impact, like Nevermind, um, Nirvana. That's not their first record, but it's the debut on a uh, on a major. They had Bleach before. And then, of course, uh, how about Jane's Addiction? Uh, nothing shocking. A lot of these records, they have a massive impact, meaning where they hit and then it completely changes the musical landscape. Jane's Addiction. Uh, that thing, uh, I, I would say, arguably, launched the massive kind of uh, alternative rock scene. Of course, I know we had alternative rock before that with The Cure and Depeche Mode and all that, but I'm talking about that next smash where just all of a sudden you have Lollapalooza and that whole thing completely changes everything. And at the same time, same year, GNR with Appetite changing everything. Um. I will say that I haven't really listened much to Appetite in the last five years or so, because I think I finally kind of hit a, a, a wall with it. I'd heard it so much, so much. From the day it came out, it's been one of my favorites forever. It's timeless, but, you know, of course, you get hammered with the sweet child of mine, the Paradise City and the Welcome to the Jungle, over and over and over on Sirius XM, over and over and over and over, unless there's a guest DJ on, and then you're gonna get a great deep track. Whenever I get a deep track on Sirius XM, I know it's not fucking, it's a guest DJ, like a Tom Morello or something, you know? Deep track like My Michelle, or uh, Out to Get Me, or, you know, Mr. Brownstone, Deep Track. Uh, oh, Rocket Queen, they play the shit out of too. But Rocket Queen still feels like a deep track. Once in a while, you get the Rocket Queen, you're like, oh, God, thank God it's not Sweet Child of Mine. The great, great songs when they came out, but I can't hear them anymore. It's a lot like ACDC's Shook Me All Night Long. I cannot listen to that, that song. But uh, what an epic record. Everything about it, man. The album cover, the Robert Williams original cover, the incredible painting. Mike Klink, unknown, you know, produces it, makes it sound classic. There's no dated shit on there. It still sounds really good. The songwriting is unbelievable. The songwriting is so fucking next level compared to what was going on in the strip at that time. And same with Jane's Addiction. Nothing shocking. A lot of people, including uh, the people I hung out with, we were like, this Jane's Addiction is our Zeppelin. This is the new Zeppelin. That's what they were kind of uh, quoted. Not big rock Zeppelin, but just so, you know, special sounding. And uh, same with GNR. It was like, holy shit, this is outlaw. This is this isn't your uh, Bon Jovi soft rock, you know? This is unreal, smashing your face rock and roll. 
crazy. And the effect it had on me and everybody around me is uh, massive. And still to this day, I don't really need to see GNR anymore. But I, I thank him for all the incredible memories and, and what that record meant to me at the time. Just unreal. And then, of course, two of my favorites later on, the Illusion Records. Completely different than Appetite, 100%. Some people don't even listen to the Illusion Records, which is uh, just sad. Unbelievable. But when I look back on the Appetite record now, and I know the history and what they had in the can and didn't put on there, I do think the record is a masterpiece, but I do think there's two songs that are kind of weak on it. And uh, one of them is a th uh, Think About You. I think about you. You know that I do. <laughs> and the other one is Anything Goes Tonight. Now, uh, I, I, I don't need either of those songs, and I don't think the band really does either because they never really play them much. They did play uh, Think About You uh, not too long ago, which was wild. But if you replace those two, it's a 12-song record. You could either have 10 songs, which would be unbelievable. So look at this. This would be the, uh, if you remove those songs, and you just went straight 10 songs. You would have Welcome to the Jungle, It's So Easy, Night Train, Out to Get Me, which is a fucking underrated classic, Brownstone, Paradise City, My Michelle, Sweet Child, You're Crazy, Rocket Queen. That would be the 10 song record without Anything Goes and Think About You. Or you could go the 12 songs and put in Civil War, which they had at the time. And uh, maybe Don't You Cry, which would have been another ballad. Might have been too much ballads on there, you know. But who am I to say? I didn't fucking make a masterpiece. So it doesn't fucking matter what I, what I think. I'm just, that's just my feeling now. When I'm listening to the record, I can pass those songs up. But man, also happy birthday, Slash. It's weird to think about their record came out and then Slash's birthday is like uh, like two days later. What a birthday present, right? And we all know the story. Record came out. They had the Jungle video. Record kind of tanked. Didn't do anything. You know, Zootot trying to work the record. Eventually, they drop uh, Sweet Child of Mine in Paradise City. And the whole fucking rest is history. Once again, proving that you uh, had to have a massive ballad back then to be huge. Bon Jovi, I'll be there for you. 18 in life. Um, you know, Skid Row. All the bands had the big ballad. And it even took uh, even Metallica. Nothing else matters. Skyrocketed. But uh, unlike the GNR record, Metallica, uh, Sandman, it hit, it hit. But, you know, Jungle did not hit, which is wild because I fucking loved it. When it came on that video and shit, I was like, this is incredible. And, uh, you know, later on down the road, you find out they did, a, I think they did a video for uh, It's So Easy. I'm pretty sure it was one of those where I, you can see it now on YouTube and, and they didn't release it, but it was like, oh, it's a shot at the cat house. Really cool. It's so easy. And, uh, I, you know, I put up on my Instagram, what's your favorite song on there? Mine, mine being my Michelle. And uh, to me, that was just this dark, dark classic in the middle of that record. Anyway, so there it is. 37 years, Appetite for Destruction, amazing title coming from the Robert Williams painting. And, and I've said it many times. I learned a lot from that band. I learned about uh, Robert Williams and uh, that kind of juxtapose highbrow art, lowbrow, highbrow, <laughs> eyebrow, eyebrow art. <laughs> Which, by the way, I got my car washed a couple days ago. And I was at the car wash and I was sitting there and I was looking at the, uh, 
you know, the, the car air fresheners. They got those trees dangling there. And they have, uh, you know, it's like peach and then cinnamon spice. And uh, they got unemployed, un <laughs> unemployed, your, your car smell. And then they got black ice. And I was like, what the fuck is black ice? What it, what is that scent? And and how did it get popular? It's the black tree, black ice. And, and I, I was thinking like, how did you even pitch that? You're like, oh, we need a new scent. How about black ice? All right, that sounds good. What's the smell? It doesn't matter. Just call it that. It'll sound, it's fucking crazy. Black ice. I drove on black ice before. I was scared out of my fucking mind. I didn't roll down the window, right? Like, oh man, that smells good, that black ice. Let's get it in my car. <laughs> Fucking black ice. They should have called it black eyes. Black eyes, like, you know, smells like domestic violence. Black eyes. <laughs> Insane. Black ice. That was an ACDC record, right? Yeah, fucking. I mean, that makes sense because fucking. ACDC is so fucking dangerous, you know? And that's a, like Black Ice, man. I remember I had this uh, meter. What year did that Black Ice come out? Let's see here. Wait a minute. Where is it? Black Ice. Am I crazy? I think I'm crazy. No, there it is. <laughs> oh, man. Ugly album cover. ACDC totally fucking failed with this Black Ice album cover. It's like the new Metallica cover. Just, who fucking put that together? Oh, that was the last great tour, man, before uh, they came back. Um, that was when they had the train on stage. They played the LA Forum, it was killer. Let's see, ACDC got so many songs, uh, I've said it before, that they just don't ever play. It is wild. This record has 15 fucking songs. Black ice. Yeah, I want my car to smell like black ice. Anyway, happy birthday, Appetite for Destruction. So fucking good, man. So good. I was, uh, I'm here in Vegas, like I said before, and I was coming up on the elevator. I always trip on these people that they're, when you're crossing the street, or you're getting on an elevator. You know, I walk up, I press the button. Then I'm standing there and then somebody next to me presses the button. Like, I, like I'm like i standing there, like I, I wouldn't press the button. Like I'm, I'm sometimes, it's lit up. The elevator, it's lit up. You see, I pressed it. And then they go over and press it again. Like total fucking no patience. Just pressing it again. They press it again like it's a gas pedal. Like, if I keep pre fucking pressing this, it'll get here sooner. It doesn't fucking get there any sooner. That is not how it works. They have to fucking stop at floors to let people out. It's not just sitting up there, the elevator, like, you know, you didn't press the button enough time, so I'm not coming down. <laughs> fucking guy. I watched him this morning. He pressed it. I've already pressed it. I'm just sitting there looking at my phone. That's what I do when I'm waiting for shit. Just look at my phone. That's the greatest thing about the phone. If there's a giant line or anything, that's why there's no more people watching because you're just facing the fucking phone. But I pressed it. I'm sitting there. Then he walks over. The guy presses it. And I can see, you can see it. It's, it's counting down up there. It's like, you know, 21, 20, stopped at 18. Then it stopped at 14. There he is again, pressing it. <clears throat> Fucking get down here. Now I can see if you got to take a bad shit or something. You So you're just doing that like, oh my God, I'm not going to make it. But if you're just a fucking lunatic thinking that the more you press that button, the faster it's going to come. You're out of your fucking mind. It's the same thing with the street crossing. You know, these people are fucking nuts. Uh, uh, uh. It doesn't work like that, you nutty fucking weirdos. <laughs> Relax. It's coming. It's coming, like I said, unless you got to take a shit. 
Oh, by the way, I uh, I forgot to tell you this. I I was in my room and I it's Slash's birthday, so there's a video of him. I put it on my Instagram where he's showing somebody the riff to Jungle, you know, and he's he's trying to remember it himself. I understand how that goes. People say, "Hey, how's that Joko?" And I'll just go, "I I don't know." Even if you've done it a thousand, a million times, Slash has played Jungle at least a million times, probably. Oh, uh, maybe not. I don't know. I don't I don't think they've done a million concerts, but. He's done a lot. And somebody goes, yeah, how's that going? He's like, oh, wait, hold on. He's doing it. And I just kind of did an Instagram remix on it where I float up. And I'm like, you know where you are? You're in the jungle, baby. And I'm doing it fucking loud. And Gertie, it just freaked Gertie out to do full volume Axel. She's on the couch. She's oh. Like, what the fuck? She's not sure if I'm yelling at her. She's never heard me go full volume, Axel. It shook her up. <clears throat> it, it shook her up, man. Right, Gert? <laughs> she was like scared for like 20 minutes. Hilarious, man. Anyway, um, uh, thank you guys all for tuning in to the uh, solo episodes. I appreciate it. I got some uh, cool guests coming up here in the next uh, few weeks or so. I'll be uh, sitting down with some uh, some of your favorites. And I'm looking forward to that. Oh, I wanted to tell you, this episode is brought to you by Standard and Strange. This is where I get all of my clothing, my denim, my leather jackets, my boots, my hoodies, my sweatshirts. Everything, standardandstrange.com. Hit them up. Tell Neil or Jeremy I sent you. Get yourself a nice little uh, discount or visit their stores, New York, New Mexico, Berkeley, and uh, go in and support small businesses. This place is absolutely fantastic. They have the highest level of denim and uh, and and leather all my favorite brands, Momotaro, Real McCoys. God, I love Real McCoys. All of that stuff. Y2, uh, John Lofgren, Boots. God, it's endless. Standardandstrange.com. Follow them on Instagram. Tell them I sent you. And also, speaking of Gertie, Migos Dog. The greatest dog food ever made. That's how I feel. It's clean. It's human grade food made in Malibu. No junk in this food at all. I'm telling you that food you get those kibble that you get at the store. It could be made in China, loaded with sawdust, make your dog sick. You want your dog to live long, happy life to keep bringing you some fucking love. Give this dog what they deserve. Migos dogs, salmon, chicken. What else they got? Duck. They got some turkey, I believe. Beef. They just got beef out. They deliver, if you live in LA, they'll deliver right to your house. Or you can buy it at Air One or Healthy Spot. All over California, Migos dog. Follow them on Instagram. Tell them I said hi. Tell them I said hi, people. All right, a couple more things, and then we will uh, we will rock and roll. Did you guys see Barbie? Have you guys seen Barbie? I'm gonna see Barbie. Um, oh yeah, here's something I wanted to talk about. There was an Instagram video, and this is kind of the the curse of uh, AI and fake video now. And I've talked about it in the last few weeks, but you know AI. It was uh, a scary thing. And uh, we got a lot of uh, music being made on AI and and a lot of videos being made. I, I, said, I saw a video of uh, Jerry Garcia is on Instagram talking about John Mayer playing in Dead & Co. Now that is just fucking spooky. And I, I sent it over to Greg Hips, my buddy Greg from the Mother Hips. And we both agreed it wasn't exact to Garcia, but that's because we know what Jerry sounds like. But it was about 90% there. 
And which means we're so early on in AI that in three months from now, this is how fast this AI shit is, is changing. It's going to be exact. And that's a scary fucking thing. It was so weird just to hear Jerry. There's two videos of him. One of them, he's talking about fish. And it was wild. He's like, you know, I really like fish. You know, just uh, they don't they don't do the same thing as we do. You know, they jam, but they 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 they're not the same as us. They're their own thing. It must have been a fish fan because he was he had Jerry AI Jerry really talking up fish. <laughs> it could have went the other way. You get a non fish fan. And they got Jerry talking like, you know, without fucking Grateful Dead, there'd be no fucking fish. And that's just the honest truth. Fish just completely rips us off. And when we're not touring, the fans get bored. So they go see fish because they need to take some drugs and twirl and spin and hear some jams, you know, and uh, it could have went that way, you know, real quick. But the Garcia one talking about John Mayer was amazing because he's like, yeah, these people... You know, they're giving John Mayer, uh, you know, a lot of grief uh, that he doesn't come from this music. You know, he's a, more of a singer songwriter and a guitar, a guitar God. But in reality, I don't come from this music either. If you don't uh, if you don't remember, if you didn't remember, I come from bluegrass and jazz. And uh, so leave him alone. He's doing a fantastic job. And it was wild just to hear this. Like, you know, Jerry AI, which also I was all for what he was saying about the AI Jerry, what he was saying about John Mayer. So it was wild. My point is, there was an AI video on Instagram a couple days ago, and uh, Ian sent it over to me, Ian Edwards, and he knows I love cars. So it was like an AI video. And at the time, I did not know it was AI, and I still... Didn't know until I was talking to uh, my boys over there, Steve Jones at Dream Racing and his buddy. I didn't know it was a fake video. And this is where AI gets dangerous. So it was uh, it was SUVs parked against the wall. And then it, it, they made it look like it was a legit government type of uh, auto test. You know, where they remember those old ones, crash test dummies. They would just have two dummies, not the band. Remember that? Oh, no, 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 no. But uh, they would have two crash test dummies in a car and then they'd smash it into a wall. Uh, I remember that one commercial where the dummies talked like, I should have worn my seatbelt. Anyway, it's kind of a spin on that where they have a uh, uh, 18 wheeler truck hit these different SUVs, new SUVs at 30 miles an hour, front and then the back. And each time they did it, it looked like the fucking new Ford Bronco just crumbled like an accordion, just, I mean, gone. Like you would be dead at a 30 mile an hour collision with an 18 wheeler. And they had all these different SUVs, but the Bronco was just, it was just shit. The, the forerunner did a great job. So I was like watching this and I had no idea that it was fake. So for weeks I was like, man, I wouldn't get a fucking Ford Bronco. That's for sure. You see that fucking piece of shit? Brand new car just crumbles with a 30 mile an hour impact. You're dead. Now, I'm telling everybody that I had no idea who, who fucking sits around. Like I got to make this uh, video and really show the Bronco as a piece of shit. I started thinking, is that like a defender? Did they make that like Range Rover? Somebody in the deep, deep web, you know, like, man, these Broncos are selling like crazy. Did Chevy do it? You know, who 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 made this video? Now, I didn't know it was fake till two nights ago. My buddy said, oh, man, some people did some research and that's a fake video. I'm like, fuck. That's fucking evil. Because here I am walking around telling people that the Broncos shit. Unbelievable, man. So that's just one little fucking nuance 
of how AI and, and fake videos and, and, you know, it's going to be fake news or we already got fake news, but it's going to be people on the screen talking and it's not going to be them, but people are going to, I saw you, man. I saw it with my own fucking two eyes. You were up there talking about how uh, you were doing blah, 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 you know? And, oh my God, it's, it's going to be to a point to where you just can't believe anything unless it's a fucking human in your face and you see him with your own eyes uh, doing something. Other than that, you just got to be like, yeah, that's got to be fake. It's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy out there. It really is going to be crazy. So if you did see that video, get at me on the uh, Instagram or whatever. And let me know. If you know who made the video and why, why would they make it? I'm just curious on uh, who went through all that to really make the Bronco look like a fucking piece of shit. Unbelievable. God damn, crazy shit out there. The world, right? It's getting nuttier and nuttier. It's fucking 120 degrees for two, three weeks. We're all burning up out there. Oh, I saw the sphere. The sphere. Sphere. <laughs> here in Vegas, that giant new concert place. I can't wait to see you two in there, man. Anyway, they got it lit up. Sometimes it's an eyeball. Sometimes it's a basketball. Sometimes it's just fucking like pouring weird white shit over it. Man, this thing is so cool. And I cannot wait to see a concert in there, especially you two. And I wouldn't be surprised if they, uh, oh man, it'd be cool to do it as a comedian. I just, it just hit me. That would be rad. The headline in there with all kinds of fucking weird shit going on behind you. Just go see a comedian on mushrooms and they got like weird, you're telling a story and behind it, the story's going on all over the fucking 360 screen. Man. That would be so crazy. A storytelling show by a comedian. Like if I'm talking about day on the green and the whole fucking sphere <laughs> turns into like a, just a giant 360 of a day on the green of like Ted Nugent, ACDC. Damn. Anyway, I, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing a band in there, man. That's going to be really cool. Uh, that, you know, like I said, I'm not going to a lot of concerts anymore, but that's something I got to do. They're taking it to another level and that'll be really cool to see what it's like. It's crazy. I can see it out my window and, uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a work of art, man. A billion dollars over budget on it. It was $2 billion. The $2 billion venue. Where are these people getting this money, man? Six billion dollars that football team sold for the the Redskins. They're still the Redskins to me because they changed their name a bunch of times. I can't remember. Is it Commanders or the Washingtons? <laughs> the Tomahawks. Anyway, six billion dollars a fucking NFL team. Man, if I owned the Raiders right now, if I was that guy with the weird haircut, Al Davis's kid, I would just sell the Raiders. And just go fucking ride it out, man. Ride it out with your billions of dollars. Why fucking, why put up with losing every year? Raiders lose every year. Just sell it and go fucking buy an island and chill. Fucking NFL. I'm, a, I'm at that age where I remember the players had jobs on the off season. Fucking not six billion dollars for a a football team. That is crazy. Oh my god. My buddy said that the they wanted that owner out of there because he was like stealing from the NFL, hiding profits so the other teams, you know, they split the profits. What a fucking shade tree. Anyway, uh, I love all you guys. DeanDelRay.com has got the tour dates. I'm going to Utah. I'm going to be in Vegas again, like I said. There's a bunch of dates with Burr. I'll be at the Comedy Store this week. Um, rocking and rolling. I'll also be at the Ice House and the Laugh Factory. If you're in L.A., I'll be home for a while. 
I'm going to be home, keep working on this new material, trying to always get funny, blocking the, uh, blocking the, the fucking dummies out there on Instagram with a fucking fierce right hand block. And, uh, I love all you guys, man. CactusRadioNetwork.com, all the podcasts. Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey, bonus episodes. There's one up right now. I was talking about the Dead & Company uh, road trip. That's uh, on there right now. And merch, DeanDelRay.com, all the merch. Got the tree hats. I got the Gertie uh, hoodies and the Dean Del Rey shirts. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review on iTunes and everywhere else. I love you guys. Thanks for your support. And I'll see you uh, next week. Candles lit.